All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day in mathematics. Warm-up 123 is on the screen. That shouldn't take you long. Uh, thank you, those of you that started right away. Appreciate it. My goodness. Uh, you guys should be experts at this by now, so I'll uh, leave that up there for a little bit. After that, get a Cornell note. You're going to need four coordinate planes from negative 10 to 10. Set that up, please. Thank you, Mr. Q. You're welcome. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's being recorded. So uh, warm-up number 123, we're done. We're still in the middle of rational functions. Tonight's home play, eight problems for graphing and transforming. Today we're going to get into more of a funner part of the rationals. Let's go. So copy the code for your home play, Z-V-Y-A-D, Z-V-Y-A-D. D B Y A D. And uh, as we approach the uh, end of the school year, we're trying to get uh, finished with rationals. We're moving on to some other concept, but I'm also working on getting you the study guide for our final. Let's go. Oh, yeah, we got this. Plus, powder puff is coming up. Let's go. We're ready. Take that W. All right, so last night's home play, six problems. Go to Canvas, turn that in, please. Use some time for that. And this is tonight's home play. Those of you that are following on YouTube, there you go. There's your practice. And uh, for the rest of us, get a Cornell note ready. You do need four coordinate planes from negative 10 to 10. Get those ready. I'll give you some time. Well, all right, well, here we go. Our objective for today can write, solve, and graph rational functions. We're still in the middle of it. We're about to finish, hopefully by the end of this week, because next week we've got to move on to the funner type of uh, concepts, more pre calc type of stuff. Uh, rational functions, tell your neighbor what they are, because rational functions, by now they should know. Bye. All right, Martin's all over this one. All right, Martin, rational functions. <laughs> Equations or functions that contain one or more or two or more or three or more rational expressions. All right, that's what they are. There they are. Oh, my bad. All right. So, we had steps for graphing to write. We went from regular uh, general rule to rational rule. We know what vertical and horizontal asymptotes are. Today, though, we're getting into the funner ones, which are the slant, oblique, or diagonal asymptotes. So, I need you guys to stay focused throughout. Get off those phones. Was that recorded? Oh, yeah. Phones. My goodness. So, with that said, we're going from vertical, horizontal. Now we're going to introduce a new one today, okay? But just to make sure we, uh, we know where we're at. We started with these, yes? Baby ones, we got those. We went to these where we need to do the uh, division because there's no one on the numerator. Everybody understand that? We have to have what number on the numerator? One and that's it. Nothing else. Okay. So, if we have something else such as this, we need to do long division, okay? We went from there to here to write an equation from those graphs. And then we went to now having a squared on the denominator, which changed the graph, okay? And then we did these and so on and so forth. So, writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Here we go. Just to recap, we've only seen two types of rational functions. This kind, g of x equals 4, uh, give me a number, x minus 5 plus 3. Question, what is the parent function of this one? So does it have a square on the denominator? No, so the parent function is f of x equals 1 over x. Are we there so far? The second one I introduced looks very similar, 
Look. The only thing, what do you guys notice? The square. It changes the graph. But once again, what is the parent function of this one? f of x equals 1 over x squared. Now, just to illustrate what each of those parent functions look like, this one, our asymptotes are at 0. And this one is here and here. So far, so good? Yes? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. This one, the asymptote, both of them going through zero. But this one, we're here and here. Questions, comments on those? We're good, right? Okay, because Brandon's going to help me out right now transform those. So, we by now know how to rewrite this. So, help me out, Brandon, Darty. What do I do? Four goes to the to the front. That is correct. We end up with x minus five plus three, and what goes on top? One. Hands if you got that. Yes. All right. Same thing with this one. G of x equals four. X minus five squared plus three. Tell your neighbor where it's going to move the parent function according to H and K. Tell your neighbor where it's going to move. Where would it move? All right. Looks like Ryland's got it. Where are we moving it to, Ryland? Five to the right and up three. Five to the right and up three. Doesn't matter which one it is, it's either this one or this one. They're both being moved by those. You're like, what? Right? However, before we do, tell your neighbor what happens with that number for the parent function. What's going to happen using that number? Talk to your neighbor, and then Ryan's going to pass it to someone. What's going to happen with that number? All right, Riley, pass it to Jay. All right, Jay, what's going to happen with that 4? Stretch it. So instead of being at 1, 1, it's going to be at 1, 4 up here. Same thing with this one at negative 1, 4. This one, instead of 1, 1, it's going to be at 1, 4 up here, and this one as well up there. So far so good, yes? Good review. And of course, we know what happens if I do this. Look up. Tell your neighbor what happens when I do that, please. What happens when I do that? All right. Jay, pass someone. Anthony. D. What happens uh, with that? It flips it. So instead of being here, we go over here, this one down here, and so on and so forth. Any questions with the two types of parent functions? Because for tonight's home play, I don't want you to graph me the parent function anymore. I just want you to graph me the actual transformation. Okay? However, we're done with the easy ones. Yeah? <laughs> Copy this one, please. Example number four. G of X equals 1 over <laughs> X squared minus 36 plus 3. X squared minus 36 plus 3. Just copy it. I'm going to go over this one completely so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So G of X equals 1 over X squared minus 36 plus 3. All right, I need a 2 to concentrate. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that one's good. All right. So, if you notice, it still has the square. So, tell your neighbor what the graph is going to look like because of this square. Tell your neighbor, what would the graph look like according to that square? I just showed you that we only have two options. Well, how is it going to look like? All right. I see MLEP going like this. 
the jailer, right? Which means like this. And why like that? Because of the squared on the denominator. That's what we're looking at. Okay? Stay focused, please. So, which means the parent function is f of x equals 1 over x squared. Do you need to graph that? No. However, we need to start with all the process the same as we did before. So, here we go. By looking at this, we already know that our VA, wait a minute, Mr. Q. It's not in parentheses. So we can't find the VA like that. What do we need to do? Think about it. What did we do in the past when it was kind of funky on the denominator to find the VA? What do we need to do? Looks like Laura's got it. Very good. Jacob's got it. Very good. How about, uh, let's see... Danny, what do you think? What shall we do when it's kind of funky on the denominator? What can we do to find our VA? How? Take the square root, or we can set this equal to zero. Follow along, please. Set it equal to zero. Remember when we had a coefficient on the x when we first started with the baby ones? Yes? So from now on, whenever you see something kind of funky, not in a parenthesis, set it equal to zero so we can solve for x. So, get ready to leave x squared by itself. What do I do? Very good. 36 plus 36 to both sides. We got x squared equals 36. David, our last step? Square root, square root. So x equals plus minus 6. Well, guess what? Our VA now has how many VAs? Two, a plus six and a minus six. Plus six and minus six. Is that going to affect the graph? Yes, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Next, HA. Tell you remember what the HA is. What is HA? Everyone, show me with your fingers. HA. Yes, three. So let's start with that. One, two, three. Got your HA. Our VA is positive 6. And negative 6. <laughs> is it crooked? Not bad. My bad. Yeah, I know my, my OCD starts picking up as well. All right. Write your pencils down. Look up to the screen. Look up. So what does the graph need to look like? Well, like this, Mr. Q, like this one with a square, J Lo. So that means we need to have a graph at the far right at the top of the HA, so here's my HA, go all the way to the far right, body point, and graph that side. How about this side? Well, there's one on the far left, Mr. Q, so go all the way to the far left, above the HA, and plot the other side. However, for these kind of graphs, we need something here in between. Look up. We're going to do this. Copy that. You're like, what? I know. But I'm not asking you for a table. I just ask you that you identify how to graph this, and that's how you graph it. One to the far right, one to the far left, and in the gap, there you go. So, process. We needed our VA or an HA. Did we have to graph our parent function? No. But did we need to know what it looks like? Yes. Therefore, since this was not in parentheses, you set it equal to zero, solve for x. Using square roots, we got two VAs, positive six, negative six. There they are. Our HA is positive three. 
On the far right, we have a graph. On the far left, we have the other graph. And in between, we fill the graph with that. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with that? Yeah, we got it, right? All right. So you're going to do one by yourself. Copy this one, example 4Q. G of x equals 1 over x squared minus 64 minus 5. I'll give you a head start, and then I'm going to send you a near pod code so you can send me your copious notes. Very good. Thank you for sending that in. However, look at this one. Do this. Oh, my goodness. Let's do this one together. All right, here we go. Copy that one. Example four, super Q. Once again, guys, if you guys make it big, uh, come back and hook me up some technology, please. Pretty please with a cherry on top. All right, so we got g of x equals 1 over x squared minus 5 plus 1. So let me get my coordinate plane going. All right, and then Brandon's going to help me with this one. So we got, um, we write D A X equals H A Y equals. What do I do, Brandon Felix? Up one, okay, so this one's going up one. Um, however, what do I do to the denominator? Close, it's not in a parentheses. Help them out, uh, Jay. Close, it's not in a parentheses. Jazzy, help them out. What do we do to the denominator? Equal it to zero. That is correct. Let's solve. Plus 5 plus 5. X squared equals 5. Next, square root, square root. X equals plus minus. You're like, wait a minute, Mr. Q. Oh, yeah, but by now we know how to find the square root of 5, right? Yeah. But for the sake of time, I'm going to give you the decimal for this one. You'll do the next one by yourself. This one is approximately 2.2, 2.2. But for those of you following on YouTube, remember you need two perfect square numbers. So this one is between 4 and 9. Then you subtract, yada, 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 the rest is history. All right. So our VA is plus minus 2.2. .2, so let's go to that. 1, 2, 3, 2.2 is about right here. Label it, please, 2.2, .2 and negative 2.2. .2. Negative 2.2 is about right here. Label it as well, negative 2.2. .2. And what's our uh, HA, Anthony E? One, that is correct. One is right here. And the rest is history. We have our graph here, here, and there. We good? Yes? All right. Send me your notes. So I, I'm not that I'm saying that you are not taking notes, but I just want to see your copious, beautiful notes on my screen. Once you send that in, do this next one by yourself. Example, 4 mega Q. G of X equals 1 over X squared minus 30 minus 6. Work on that one. Give you some time. Copy and go. All right, so uh, really quick, what's our HA, um, Claire? HA was 
negative 6. Okay, we got that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is correct. Negative 6. Once again, make sure you label it with a number so I know where you're at and you're not giving me just the same graph over and over. Ah. Uh, Anthony, D, help us out with, uh, with our VA. What do I do? Set it equal to zero and then add 30, add 30, x squared equals 30. Square root, x equals plus minus something. So between what two perfect squared numbers is 30 found? 25 and 36. Here goes the process one more time. So if I take the square root of 25, it's 5. If I take the square root of 36, it's 6. So this number has to be between 5 and 6. Is that correct? That's why this is approximately 6 points. My bad. Five point something, five point something, five point something. Let's find out what that something is. So, Anthony D, what do I do? Uh, subtract uh, 25 from 30. Subtract 25 from 30 first, so that is 5 yeah. over subtract 25, 25 from 36, and that gives us 9. So therefore, 5 divided by 9 does not fit in there at a 0. It's in there 5 times. That's 45. It's what? It's 11. It's 11. Oh, I did that to see if you guys were paying attention. Very good. Good eye. <laughs> it's, a, it's a teaching strategy, right? 5 <laughs> divided by 11. No. Add a zero, fits in there four times. That's 44, subtract that six. Add a zero, fits in there five times. 55, five, and it repeats. So, 5.45 repeating, yes? So, we go to our VA is plus minus 5.45 repeating. So that means we go one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about halfway there. That is 5.45. And of course we have negative one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about right there. All right, not bad, yes? All right, so show your neighbor from there where you're going to graph your, uh, your curves at. Let's see, where do you graph your curves at? Then Anthony's going to pass it to someone. Where do they go? Anthony D, pass someone. Claire, where do I graph that? Top right over here. Just above the 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 HA, okay, just above the HA. Right there. Same on the left side. A big curve under right here, the asymptote. Hands if you got something like that. That is correct. Send me your notes. Let me send you the screen. There it is. Copy that. My bad. I'm saying send me that. And copy the last one. Example 5. G of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x plus 1. <laughs> oh. Saw that risk? Let's go. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's do this one together. So we got example 5, g of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, look at the denominator and tell your neighbor what kind of graph we should get at the end. Look at the denominator, tell your 
Maybe what kind of graph we should get at the end. Brandon, Doherty, what kind of graph should we get at the end? One on the bottom, one at the top. So at the bottom, at the top, asymptotes. That means my parent function is f of x equals 1 over x. So we need a 1 on the numerator. But do we have that in the numerator? No, so you never what to do. What shall we do? Courtney Jean, what shall we do? Long division. Let's go. So write this down. X squared plus 5X plus 6 divided by X plus 1. Stay focused because this one's a, a fun one. Oh, yeah. To give you more of these for home play, right? So here we go. Help me out, um, Jacob squared. What number times x gives me x squared? What number times x gives me x squared? X, that is correct. Write that in there. X times x is x squared. X times 1 is 1x. We're going to subtract, circle it so you remember to distribute here and here. Are we there so far? Bless you. So the x squares cancel. What is 5x minus 1x? 4x. Bring down the next part, which is plus 6. Let's do the process again. What number times x gives us 4x, Jacob? 4. That is correct. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 1 is 4. Man, without hesitation, let's go. And we're going to subtract. Circle it to remember to distribute here and here. This cancels. So we have a remainder. Yes, what is 6 minus 4? 2. 2. Okay, that's our remainder. So here we go. This is the part that you're going to be like, whoa. What is the answer to this long division? What's in red, is that correct? So let's write it out, write it with big x plus 4. However, do we have a remainder? Yes, yeah, so what do we do with that? We make a fraction. What goes on top? The 2. What goes on the bottom? x plus 1, is that correct? Yes, okay. However, we're not done. We need to rewrite this. Where does this go now? To the what? To the back. Where does the 2 go, though? In the front. So that means I end up with 2 plus, we got x plus 1 in the denominator, and then we got plus x plus 4, and we put a 1 on the numerator. G of X. All right. So let's graph this. You're like, that looks kind of funky, Mr. Q. All right, hold on, hold on. X equals, tell your neighbor what the uh, VA is. What is the VA? Negative one. Okay. Hold on. Before you leave, I'm going to keep you more time. Just giving you a heads up. Negative one is right here. So here's the fun part. What is our HA? X plus 4, the whole thing. So I'm going to write Y equals X plus 4. So check this out. I already graphed the VA, which is here. Do we know how to graph this? Yes, we do. It's a linear equation. Where do I start? Positive 4, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4. I need a slope. What is my slope? 1 over 1. So that means I go 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the right, or 1 down, 1 to the left, 1 down, 1 to the left. 
What do you guys notice about that asymptote? It's slanted, is that correct? All right, here goes a question, or I'm going to keep you for the next problem, because I don't have a class. Here goes a question. Where do I graph my curves? I'm going to ask one person. If they got it, we're done. Now we do one more. Where do I graph, according to what we said, where do I graph my curves? I think this one's going to Anthony. So tell your neighbor, where do we graph the curves? Where do we graph the curves? Or Kimberly, I think Kimberly's got it, I think so. Let's go with Anthony E. Where do we graph the curves, Anthony E? Look at it. This one's not slanted, but this one, this one is. I'm going to allow Anthony D to help him out. How about Anthony D? Where does it go, Anthony D? According to this. No, no, no. I just want where to graph it. Where do I graph the curves? Maya, go. That is correct. Up here and down here. Maya in the house. Home play. Make sure you uh, do the practice at home. See you guys tomorrow. Reminder, minimum day tomorrow. Bye.